E.T. The Extraterrestrial was a blockbuster movie that came out in 1982, quoting from Wikipedia, surpassing Star Wars to become the highest grossing film of all time, a record it held for 11 years. 1982, a year in which Madonna made her debut, and Michael Jackson released Thriller, which still holds the title for the world's best-selling album. I was in grade school at the time and managed to see the film. It had captured my imagination as it did for millions of others who watched it. The video game version on the Atari 2600 was rushed to release to make a September 1st, 1982 deadline. The game's programmer, Howard Scott Warshaw, was impressively able to design, program, get sign-off from Steven Spielberg on the completed project, all in a time span of just five weeks. It contained the first sanctioned video game Easter egg, meaning permission was granted before inserting it into the game. This game also contains one of the earliest examples of in-game product placements, Reese's Pieces. E.T. is a single-player game. I'm pretty sure I received this game for Christmas that year. At the time, it really didn't matter to me how good or bad the game was. I had the E.T. game, and I was a happy camper. Atari produced over 5 million copies of this game. However, so many cartridges were returned that for some reason the firm decided to bury their glut of games in a landfill in Alamogordo, New Mexico. Recently, on April 26, 2014, there was an event in Alamogordo where they actually dug up many of these old games to confirm part of the rumor. E.T. was not the only game buried there, however, and there were not millions of E.T. cartridges buried, as had been rumored. This dig was documented in a recently released film titled Atari Game Over currently playing on Netflix. In this game, you play as E.T., who has been dropped off on Earth by space aliens, and you must find a way to phone home to get a ride back. In order to phone home, you must find three hidden phone parts spread throughout the map. You start out with 10,000 energy points that burn down as you move throughout the map. Once you run out of energy, you die. You have three lives, the second two giving you 1,500 energy points when Elliot revives E.T. You can supplement your energy by finding and eating Reese's Pieces. You can hold on to nine pieces. You have the option to either eat them for energy or give them to Elliot for extra bonus points at the end of the game. Once you have found all three phone pieces, you must find the area on the map that you can place the call from, the phone home zone. But it's not quite that easy. There are a couple of humans in the game that make your task much more difficult. The FBI agent relentlessly tries to track you down. If he touches you, he will steal a foam piece, provided you have any, as well as all of your Reese's pieces. The scientist simply tries to kidnap E.T. and take him to the lab for observation. Both of these pests can severely slow you down and set you back quite a bit. There is a way to repel them, by finding a sendback zone indicated by the graphic that looks like three Greek columns and pressing the fire button. This will send them back to their headquarters. A major source of complaints in this game are the dreaded pits. The problem is that you can easily fall into the pits, over and over again, if you're not careful. The bane of many gamers. The graphics in this game are not that bad. E.T. himself is nicely animated as he moves around. He actually looks like E.T. from the movie. The human sprites are nicely detailed, multicolored and flicker free. The pits in the game have jagged edges, but get the point across. The colors of the game are mostly green, being in the outdoor environments. The resolution on the console is not high enough to actually make out that the little dots are Reese's pieces, so you just have to know what they are. The indicators on the status bar up top are well done and clearly indicate their intended purpose. There is a sound for moving around, hovering, picking items up, and a nice sound for your ship dropping E.T. off and picking them up. The E.T. song from the movie also plays at the start of the game. I was thinking about how the sound effects could possibly be improved, and the idea I came up with is it would have been nice to have a voice-enhanced version with certain catchphrases from the movie, such as Elliot and E.T. phone home. In this game, the left difficulty controls whether or not Elliot can be present when the alien ship returns to pick up E.T. In the A position, Elliot cannot be present. In the B position, Elliot can be present during the pickup. The right difficulty switch controls the speed of the humans. In the A position, the humans are quicker than in position B. 
According to the manual, there are a total of three game variations, which can be cycled by pressing the game select switch. In variation one, all humans are present in the game. In mode two, Elliot and the FBI agent are present. In mode three, only Elliot is present in the game. It is important to note, ET can be made to move faster if you hold the fire button down in the direction of travel. However, this will cost you energy points. Also, when in the presence of an arrow, ET can teleport to a new map location in the direction indicated by the arrow. That will help you quickly get away from the FBI agent and the scientist. I really don't think this game was so bad the unsold stock should have been literally buried. Perhaps Atari was just trying to bury the memory and move on. For me, the memory is positive, so instead of burying them, I'll be trying to dig them up as I replay this game. I would classify this game as above average as I have seen many games that are much worse than this. I am pretty much blown away at how Howard Scott Warshaw was able to produce a great game in such a limited amount of time. He incorporated the spirit of the movie quite nicely in this game. In my estimation, he did not cut corners. On the Twin Galaxies website, there is one NTSC world record listed under the skill Game 1 Difficulty BB and is held by Glenn Case with a score of 1,058,399. I actually enjoy playing this game and I would recommend it, especially to young gamers that have seen the film. My rating as a child would have been 4 out of 5 stars since I have fond memories of the game. And now, as an adult, I would give it 3 out of 5 stars because, although I still like it, it is not a game that I often return to play. I also find it very frustrating to play in the most difficult setting, BB Game Variation 1. There was an interesting quote by Howard Scott Warshaw in the Wikipedia article. It read as follows, People worry I might be sensitive about the ET debacle. But the fact is, I'm always happy to discuss it. After all, it was the fastest game ever done, it was a million seller, and of the thousands of 2600 games, how many others are still a topic? Another thing I like to think about is having done E.T., consistently rated among the worst games of all time, and Yars Revenge, consistently rated as one of the best, I figure I have the unique distinction of having the greatest range of any game designer in history. That's a great quote. Over the years, there have been several ET-related follow-up games and hacks. ET Fixed, which fixes the pits so you don't fall in them so easily. ET Return to Earth, ET Book Cartridge, Extraterrestrials, and many others. Not long after the movie came out, there was an EP released by the comedy rock band duo Barnes & Barnes titled I Had Sex with ET. The story goes that the movie was such a big hit, Universal Studios threatened a lawsuit. So Barnes & Barnes immediately took it out of release, with only about 200 copies actually being sold. Of course, that means that these copies are now very valuable and highly sought after by collectors. I was able to track down these photos of the EP. There is no way that E.T. should ever be considered as one of the worst games on the Atari 2600 console. That's ridiculous. It's a great game. I have a lot of positive memories playing it, and I enjoy playing it from time to time, and I do recommend it. <laughs>